literary purposes. All right. They're after us. And I like the next verse. It says, and Elisha prayed. And he said, Lord, I pray. Open his eyes. Let him see with spiritual eyes. Come on. Let him see with the eyes of faith. Open his eyes that he might see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of the horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Yes, the valley was filled with soldiers. But all around the mountains, all the way everywhere that he could see were the arms of the Lord, the angels of the Lord, and their fiery chariots there. Come on, I just want to tell you something, that God has more than the devil even thought about. Come on, somebody. And I'm going to tell you something, the God that you and I serve, He does not even need all of His angels and all those fiery servants. Come on, I got news for you today. You and God make a majority. Come on, somebody. I said, you and God make a majority. The only one that you need is the God of heaven in your life. Amen. Amen. If you read the rest of the story, it's fascinating. God struck the whole army with blindness and they led them all away. I mean, it's just fascinating what God can do, right? Fascinating. But I'm just telling you, we need the eyes of faith. And you know, sometimes I feel sorry for the devil. He's a loser. Let me remember that. He's a loser. Come on. He is a loser. He said, I'm going to lead a rebellion in heaven. You watch. All these angels will follow me. Only one third followed him. Then guess what happened? Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, defeated him on the cross, triumphing over him publicly, came up out of the grave. I'm going to tell you something. He knows he's beat. He knows his time is short. Satan knows the Word of God. He's read that, oh no, my future holds a bottomless pit for 1,000 years. And at the end of that 1,000 years, guess what? I'm going to be thrown into, a, into the lake of fire. Come on, somebody. I'm just here today to tell you that you need God to give you some spiritual eyes. You need to see who your God is. And I'll tell you something. Sometimes we tell ourselves, I just feel so alone. You ever heard that? I'm so alone. Let me tell you something. You are not alone. You are not alone. Amen. You have one by the name of Jesus who will never leave you or forsake you. Come on, somebody. He'll never leave you or forsake you. In fact, the scripture tells us that in the spiritual realm, you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. Amen. I'm just here today to tell you that you've got all that you need. Let me give you a couple great verses today. First John chapter 4 and verse number 4 says this. Greater is he that's within you you than he that's within the world. Come on. You don't have to worry today. Amen. Let God open up your spiritual eyes. Romans 8.31 tells us this. If God is for us, who can be against us? Who would dare to think that God, that they could come against the Lord? Do you realize who you have on your side? Come on. The scripture describes that, that, that Jesus Christ is in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. You're immersed in, baptized in Surrounded by the third person of the Trinity, the mighty Holy Spirit, the one who created the, you know, this earth by his power. Come on. Amen. Behind you is God the Father with all of his power, with all of his provisions, the owner of heaven and earth. Let me tell you something. You are in good hands. Amen. Well, I, it doesn't look good, Pastor, this relationship, this marriage, my finances, my job, my home, my health, my kids, my parents. It doesn't look good. Stop looking at it with natural eyes and start looking at it with the eyes of faith today. Amen. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can even ask or think according to the power that works in you. Let me ask you a couple more questions. Do you love God? Do you got any lovers of God in here? Wave. Do you love God? Are you called according to His purposes? Is that who you are? Amen. If that is who you are, then even if everything turns out negative, it don't matter. You still win. Hello. Thank you for helping me preach, Dwight. Come on. Romans 8, 28 says this. And we know that all things Work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Amen. I just tell you, 
Amen. We need to have the eyes of faith. And then we need to have ears of faith. In the New Testament, we're taught to listen with spiritual ears. Did you know you got two sets of ears? You got your natural ears, you got your spiritual ears. Jesus taught the people about the things of God while he was on the on earth. And this is what he said in Matthew eleven fifteen. 15. He said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. When he wrote letters to the church, who's part of the church today? Wave at me. He, when he wrote letters to the church, seven churches, all different letters. He, but in every single letter, guess what he said? He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, he wasn't talking about your natural hearing. He was talking about your spiritual hearing. You want to know why? I'm going to tell you why. Because God has something to say to you. Amen. Did you hear what I said? I said, God has something he wants to say to you, Sean. He's got something he wants to say to you, Dale. God has something he wants to say. He wants to give you wisdom. He wants to show you how he's going to move. He wants to outpour encouragement on you. But if our ears are closed, if our ears are dull and slow to hear, we might miss what God's doing. I don't want to miss what God's doing. Come on. Amen. Hearing from God is one of the most important things that I do as a pastor. I, I don't want to just get up here and preach a sermon. You know, you can buy sermons off the internet. Hello? You can get that. You don't even have to buy them. You can just, let me tell you something. I don't want that. I want to hear from God because I've told the Lord when I step behind this pulpit, I don't want to just have something to say. I want to have the very message from God for the heart of the people that's going to encourage the faith of God's people and lift them to a higher plain in the name of Jesus and it requires something of me it requires that I learn to listen and hear and obey spiritual hearing doesn't come automatically you've got to learn how to hear from the Lord and now I'm going to tell you there's a store over here called Best Buy right? how many know the Best Buy is over there right I'm going to see if I can hear what they're saying over at Best Buy Shh, I can't hear can't hear them you want to know why? I'm too far away. What's true in the natural is true in the spiritual. If you want to hear from God, you got to get close to God. <laughs> Help me get my point. You want to hear from the Lord? You want Him to speak to you? You got to get close to Him. Hello? And let me and let me and let me tell you something. A lot of people think, well, when God speaks, it's gonna sound like thunder. No, it's not. The Bible says He's got a still, small voice. And the scripture says, my sheep know my voice. John 10, 27 says that. So you know his voice if you're one of the flock of God. But you know, the problem we have today is called earbuds. Hello, somebody. We got earbuds. We got television. We got radio. We got this. We got that. We got distraction, distraction, distraction. And let me tell you what happens. We can't hear God with all of that. If you want to hear God, let me tell you from God, let me tell you, just unplug for a while. Get yourself out underneath a tree somewhere. Amen. Get a good cup a coffee in your Bible and read a while and pray a while and sit a while and listen and say speak to me Lord and let me tell you if you sit there long enough the Lord himself will speak to you he's awesome. he's got something to say to you today we've got to have spiritual hearing well, let's jump over the Old Testament and see what happens 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse 22 talks about David there's a great story about David. He's become king, and not just the king of Judah, you know, where he reigned for seven years. He's now king of Hebron, you know. He's going to reign there for the next 33 years as a unified Israel. His reign is being established. He's dealt, he has dealt with the Jebusites in Jerusalem and got rid of them. He's, he's fortifying the city of David. He's marrying wives and having babies and other kings are actually sending him tribute and sending him things he's building his big palace there everything seems well and at that very moment guess what happens he gets the news that there's trouble there's trouble that's come you ever felt like that 
You're just getting established. You're just getting started. Things are just now starting to go pretty well. You fought some battles and you think, I'm going to live in peace for a while. And guess what? All of a sudden, trouble knocks on your door. Now, let me tell you something. Satan will tell you this. He'll tell you this. You know whose fault it is? It's your fault. You're no good. How many know he's a liar? He's the accuser of the brethren. He, he probably told David, Satan probably told David, it's all your fault. But David didn't believe him, you know? And, and we can't believe him either, amen? And just because things don't go perfect in our life, that doesn't mean that we're to blame. In fact, can I just say something? Sometimes the attacks of life come because you're doing something right. Tell your neighbor it happens because I'm living right. Amen. And it, what, this was an attack against all Israel. They had recognized David as king. Peace had come to the kingdom. Come on. And God had given them the, 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 this peace. And, and the same thing happened to you and to me. Amen. How many of you realize that we have also recognized, not, not David, but the son of David. I'm talking about Jesus. We recognized him as king. Come on. Peace has come into our lives. Amen. We know who he is. We know, we know all of that. And then guess what? The enemy isn't happy about that. And so when stuff happens, don't assume it's your fault. Don't believe the accusing lies of the enemy. So what did David do? He inquired of the Lord. If you don't know what to do, go to prayer. Come on, somebody. He prayed about it. Sometimes we think, I know what to do, but I'll handle this myself, Lord. I got this, Jesus. You don't need no, no, no. No, no, go pray about it. Talk to the Lord about it. And then he asked for wisdom, and then God told him what to do. And then guess what? He went out. He defeated the Philistines that had set themselves up at Rephim, and, and he defeated them. And David thinks that's what, it, that's what the trouble was. The, the Philistines had gathered there. and God, He says, what do I do, Lord? Says, Go out. God gave him the victory. Amen. He thought, well, I dealt with that. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's pick up the story here. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 22, it says, Then the Philistines went up once again. Oh, I hate those words, don't you? <laughs> once again. <laughs> I thought I already dealt with that, Lord. <laughs> Come on. I thought I already passed the test. I thought I already had the victory. I, I have not been through this one time already. I, I thought I vanquished the enemy again. How many of you know sometimes problems persist in life? How many of you know I can give one little credit to the devil, and that is this, that he is at least persistent in his attacks. Come on. He's persistent at the problems of life. It says what happened? David went back to the Lord. <laughs> Therefore, David inquired of the Lord. Just because you prayed once doesn't mean you don't need to pray again. you got to get fresh directions. Tell your neighbor, last yesterday's revelation won't do. You need to hear from him today. Come on. Amen. You need to hear from God. And so the Lord spoke to him as he was inquiring. And he said this. He said, you shall not go up. Circle around behind him and come upon them in front of the mulberry trees. And it shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees. Then you shall advance quickly. For the Lord will go out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines. Wow, God doesn't do everything the same way every single time. This time he had to go, he had to obey, he had to circle back around. Get, can you imagine him telling this to his troops? Okay, guys, here's what we're going to do. You know that big old stand of mulberry trees? We're going to get in there, we're going to sit in there, and we're going to wait. I hate that part, don't you? I don't like to wait. I want my victory right now. I want the answer right now. I want the revival right now. I want the touch of God right I don't like the way. But God says you're going to have to wait. Right? You're going to have to wait. So there they are. They're in the mulberry trees and they're waiting. And we say, what are we waiting for? Well, when you hear an army marching through the tops of the trees, that's when we're to go. Now, one, one version says the sound of a marching. That word that they translate marching can also be sound, uh, translated as the sound of a moving. 